<laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode of The New Normal. My name is Lindsay Runyon, Director of College Ministry, and this is my co-host. Zach Giltz, the Youth Director here at a and Methodist Church, and we're so pumped that y'all are here today. <laughs> the, <laughs> the New Normal is a uh, podcast where we break down uh, church for our everyday lives, and uh, the way that we're going to do that is just reading scripture, uh, giving our personal takeaways on what the Holy Spirit's doing, and then also um, listening and commenting and just on the sermon and where God was guiding us in that, and also just the entire worship service and how we were able just to respond um, to God within that. And then also giving you challenges, um, spiritual disciplines, practices, whatever you want to call them, and also questions to kind of be able to reflect and respond um, to this next week. Uh, but first, what is our icebreaker question? But first, Zach? let's get into it. I'm nervous. Okay, so Lindsay, we are in quarantine, as is the rest of America. Yes. I'm curious, uh, do you have a quarantine uniform? Like just kind of an outfit or a type of clothing? that you find yourself in at least five days a week and what is it sweatpants for sure solid uh and yoga well mm, yeah yoga pants or sweatpants and then a sweatshirt usually okay but i always have to put on shoes when i'm at work that's how i know that i'm at work so when i take my (laughs) i take my tennis shoes off then i'm not at work anymore so that's how i know Interesting. I yeah. have like certain rooms of the house that I don't like work in. Oh, okay. So like the space helps separate it for me. Yeah. What about you? What's your uniform? Um, oh, I definitely do. Like not even like a type of clothing. It's like my white Adidas athletic shorts. No. That um, I th- I genuinely think that I've had them since I was in probably eleventh grade of high school. Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten rid of them because they're the most comfortable pair of clothing that I wear or oh. own. Uh, so those, and then uh, I have like my laundry day drawer of t-shirts that oh, are hideous. insanely comfortable, but are hideous. And so I have about a dozen shirts that are just like so comfortable to wear that no one really sees. Um, and yeah, so it's it's a mix of those two things. Okay. So that's really... That's shoes or no one. shoes? No. Um, I find that if I'm on like just an audio call, uh-huh. I like to walk around and yeah. like I've started just walking around and pulling weeds out of my front yard while I'm on phone calls because I'll like yeah. read the headphones in and then I'll put on socks because I'm a socks guy, but I'll <laughs> slide on just my Sperry's because they don't pick up as much so I can take like three steps inside without tracking a bunch of oh, stuff. Oh no. I'll slip them right back off. Yeah. So, so yeah, my uniform is athletic shirt, shorts. I actually do have about nine of this exact same shirt and yeah, i'm pretty colors. i don't know i think it's only that shirt in that color but i may no don't even no shirt every sunday it's fine it's fine you can look back it's fine cool, 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 anyways cool, cool, cool. so this sunday we started kind of a new series mm-hmm. um what is it what are what are we talking about what was our scripture i totally yeah missed. so no you're good we um we started today in the gospel of matthew uh in chapter 9 verses 9 through 13 Uh, which is um, just kind of the story of God calling Matthew, who Mm -hmm. is a tax collector, uh, inviting him to dinner or going to dinner with him, uh, and then being kind of um, questioned by the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So uh, were there any things that stood out to you just in your own reading of the scripture? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, for me, in just the call of Matthew's story and what's happening, I just see the pursuit of Jesus just going into everything. So knowing, mm-hmm. knowing Matthew's past and who he was sitting with, he was sitting with sinners and I mean, he's a tax collector, so he's not like the most likable guy. And so Jesus going into this, knowing what is about to happen um, and to see that kind of reaction. And so um, in my own life this past week, I've just been asking, oh, spoiler alert, uh, like where's Jesus been pursuing me? Like where's God coming into my life and in breaking? <laughs> Um, we might be talking about that at the end of the episode for you guys, but um, where can we just rekindle our first love um, for Jesus and know that that's what fuels us. And so seeing Jesus there, I think was just an encouragement to me and where am I, where I am at um, just in my walk with, walk with Christ. So what, uh, what about you? What'd you glean? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of things. One is how frustrated I get with the Pharisees for being like such rude people. Mm. We're like accosting Jesus, who's the acolyte savior of the world. Um, But then also recognizing in my own life, like how deeply it resonates with me that I will question God's authority Mm. uh, in my own life. So in one hand, kind of holding the frustration, but in the other, like completely 
understanding yeah. or at yeah. least like yeah no for sure being more compatible with that that viewpoint of kind of coming to Jesus and saying to his disciples you know why 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 is your teacher sitting with these people right yeah. and then Jesus doesn't even skip a beat he just turns around and he's like um I'm like healthy people don't need a doctor <laughs> but you know these people do which makes me think then of this kind of idea of all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God it's not like mm. the Pharisees are without sin right they are just too comfortable with their mess, as it were, mm. um, to acknowledge where God needs to be working in their lives, where these tax collectors um, and the, the sinners that are surrounding Jesus are people recognizing that what Jesus is bringing to the table is what they want in their lives. Yeah. Um, so I really love this passage. Yeah, no, for sure. What did you kind of glean then from the sermon? I mean, mm -hmm. there was a lot of those elements with it, but was there anything else? Yeah, so kind of the first things, I think Preston set this sermon up really well. Um, he said, uh, one of the first lines he said was every day is an Easter day, mm -hmm. um, right? Like, yes, last week, last Sunday, we got to celebrate Easter as one kind of big day. You pointed out that Easter goes beyond Easter Sunday, mm -hmm. um, in the life of the church, but even in the life of a Christian, every day is a day that Christ has risen. Sure. Um, and so what does it look like to see God working in us in our daily lives? Um, to see that Jesus moved the Holy Spirit from the temple, right? From the Holy of Holies into our own homes and really ultimately into our, our hearts, our yeah. inner beings. For sure. um, and then lastly, he uh, opened with prayer and said that we invite God uh, to this place where, to the places he's already been. Mm -hmm. And I think even beyond inviting God in the places that he's already been is inviting ourselves to see where God already is. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of this idea of blessing this mess is just being present um, with kind of the things that we think are well hidden. Yeah. but God sees us exactly where we are. Mm -hmm. um, and so Preston kind of transitioned out of that prayer by saying, I'm 100% sure that you have a mess, uh, which is very convicting, right? Like as Christians, <laughs> you went on yep. to say, you know, like we go, we shine our shoes, we get ready for church, right? Like um, I remember picking out like just the right collared shirt because I was like, I'm an FSC today. You know, we don't want to go like too starchy, but I'm right, like, yeah. not feeling t-shirt. So like we, we curate ourselves in a way that kind of hides our messes mm -hmm. and yet God sees those. And so um he has this big example of like the enchilada saga if you will of kind of everything that can go wrong will and does go wrong yeah um and this idea of it just being incredibly messy uh and he transitions from that into the wisdom of this woman who is hosting a swim and scripture for his youth group when he was younger mm -hmm. uh and how she talks about how uh, she has a sign that says bless this mess and one of the students has the courage to be like what mess uh and she's like oh honey um, and kind of points to the junk drawer, the junk cabinet, and the, yeah. the closet that's filled with the brim. And so how mm -hmm. she's kind of hiding all of these messes. Uh, and we realize that this is a metaphor. The bless this mess isn't a cry for God to approve of our stuffed closets and cluttered drawers, um, but really that it's a cry to this first step of redemption. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that this season that we're in, uh, in this series is going to kind of lead us through this path of what does it mean not only to be um, acknowledging where God it already is in our lives, but inviting mm -hmm. God to work more deeply and to work in unison with God for sure. Uh, as we move forward. And so, um, yeah, so inviting God in, uh, for me, one of the ways that this makes the most sense to me is, um, like with fitness, uh, I think of course. for, yeah. So for like four years, uh, I like wanted to go to the gym because mm -hmm. I used to do that. Like I used to be in like good physical shape. Um, and then I just like took a break or stopped or whatever. And then I wanted to be back in the shape that I was in in high school mm -hmm. before I went to a gym in my late twenties, yeah. uh, which you, you can't really get in shape without the gym, right? You can get your personal equipment, all that stuff, whatever, for the sake of the metaphor, follow me. Right. And I think in the same way though, in my faith, like I'll want to show up more mature in my faith than I am when I come to Jesus. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, when really like Jesus is the one that, that is cleaning up these spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think just this humility of knowing that God is with us, uh, but beyond that accepting that we need God's help uh, is where this, this sermon really led me. For sure. Um, so yeah, that the spirit is really the only thing that can just can transition to that cleanse. So um, but what about you? I've, I'm great at monologuing, but I'm really curious, like, were there any things that really stood out to you kind of beyond that or, or entirely separate? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, what you said about resonating about not just blessing, but this idea of redemption. Um, and uh, it may seem that we have all of our stuff together, but where, where are our messes and where are we kind of shining that light for Jesus to really work? Um, so, uh, 
I saw that in contemporary a lot, just with the songs that were chosen. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, the kind of reflection song called Sales, I think was huge mm. for me. So falling is easy, but staying in love is hard. Because I think it's easy for us to be like, oh yeah, Jesus, but it's that like continual relationship. Um, and it's hard to be honest and keep your heart open to be who we truly are without any excuses, without a facade. There's no pretending and here is God's love um, and where it sets us free. And so I think for that, it was like, dang, like how many walls am I accidentally putting up and not really mm-hmm. seeing? Um, and then kind of that outro uh, song, which I was kind of surprised about was the, we praise you. Um, mm-hmm. And some of the uh, verses in that, it says, Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. We sing your name in dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. And so I think in all of that, yes, where are we coming to know it's hard, but to know that we are praising a God who has redeemed us. And we Mm -hmm. saw that a lot in traditional as well. Um, with a soloist singing, like, whom shall I, like, fear? Um, And also lift high the cross. Like, where are we in this adoration for Jesus Um, in such um, crazy unknown times where we bring all of ourselves continually surrendering, but also to be able to praise as well. Um, So that's kind of what I gleaned and what our practice is. (laughs) Our spiritual discipline uh, this week is just the discipline of simplicity, Um, We have so many competing attachments um, that are vying for our time, and some of them we don't even enjoy um, or even take pleasure from, um, but we somehow crave them. And so for me, it's been uh, interesting when most of those have been stripped away in this pandemic. I don't know if you're like feeling that at all, Um, but uh, for me, it's been hard because now I'm like, what am I supposed to be reaching for when there's nothing to reach? Um, and God being like, no, I'm like stripping this stuff away so you can like focus on me. And I'm like, what? No. <laughs> so uh, let me fill it up with like more things that I don't want to do. Uh, so for me, uh, the, the discipline of simplicity, um, which we'll kind of walk uh, in the next few weeks together, kind of the first step is just gratitude. Where are we receiving everything that God has given us um, as a gift rather than something we need? Um, where are we actually seeing God's provision in our delivery grocery services or just our provisions in sunlight Um, just those basic needs that maybe we don't even think about where we actually seeking him in our gratitude and in that simplicity knowing that that's what fuels us that is our first love and how he's pursuing us so i don't know is that easy for you zach at all or is that something you struggle with i think the times that i have really like leaned into simplicity uh, and this idea of kind of letting go of some either bad habits or even just like neutral habits right like mm-hmm. there's nothing inherently bad about playing madden there's nothing inherently bad about netflix uh, madden? unless FIFA? Uh, just kidding oh, it's come fine on. it's the other football it's fine um but no just this idea that simply giving something up and we talked about this with fasting giving right. something up simplifying your life, it doesn't have the profound impact unless you invite Jesus to fill that spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for me, the challenge has always been the buildup of what am I kind of letting go to the wayside, right? Yeah, like I'm not going to sure. do these things, uh, but then really being, uh, having to be just as, if not more intentional with what I'm filling that space with. For sure. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, that would be my encouragement. One to myself, if I could look back and kind of help improve my own time in that, right. um, but then also to our viewers congregation community right. here. Yeah. Um, and it's so, good. it's so, so hard for me to, to like not go into like Netflix mode or like any sort of live streaming. It's like, what do I do with all this extra time? Watch a movie. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so I think it's, uh, it's hard. And that's why we need community and accountability too, to be like, Hey, like let's focus mm-hmm. and do this together rather than this just being something you have to do on your own. Um, yeah. You need a gym buddy. Hey. Right? A spotter. <laughs> We're coming all together here. Make sure you got your spotters out there. <laughs> right? Kendra's my yoga buddy, so we text every time we do yoga. So yeah. I mean, it's that accountability, right? It works. Right, there you go. We did a yoga yesterday. She was Audio. super helpful, being like, you're doing that wrong. <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch this. Like, it's just fine. kidding. What, um, uh, what questions do we have for this week? And what yeah, yeah. so... Pondering? Yeah, leaning into this idea of simplicity and, mm-hmm. and where the service was leading us. Uh, I think there's two questions that really stand out of where is God already pursuing you? Um, not just thinking that we're inviting Jesus into these spaces, but acknowledging where Jesus already is. So yeah. um, taking and internalizing that question of where is Jesus already pursuing you? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Preston kind of closed with this idea that Jesus uh, forgives, heals, and loves fully. 
Mm. And so where are you receiving, um, whether it's forgiveness or healing or just the grace and the blessing of love? Yeah. Uh, where are you able to experience that in your life uh, in, in this upcoming week is kind of that challenge that I think simplicity gives us room to be more present with our inner self um, to make an outward difference, right? If we're allowing God to change us from the inside, it will make a difference on the outside. So for sure, for sure. Yeah. And I think it's um, even kind of reframing it of where are we opening that front door of our lives to Jesus, mm-hmm. or maybe it's, maybe it's a room or the entire house, or maybe it is a small cabinet that we've tried to keep locked away, but where can we just receive how do we know that Jesus is pursuing us and God's pursuing us, but where are we actually receiving and um, knowing that it's okay? No, I think it's really great questions. For sure. Um, and with that, like, we don't want the conversation to end here, right? We just asked some questions. We'd love to get your feedback, uh, whether it's the answer to those questions, whether it's, hey, this is actually what I gleaned from the service and it was totally different, or I really like what you said, whatever it is, um, we want the conversation to continue. Uh, one way to do that is on the platform we're on here uh, by just throwing comments in the comment bar. Uh, and we'd love to follow up with you if you have a group me with us or our email, uh, whatever it is. We don't uh, want the conversation to just end here, but want to kind of carry it um, through the week uh, yeah. and through our lives. So. Yeah, we're breaking down church and reflecting on it. And the church is not just us, but you guys as well. So we want to hear from you. So definitely comment um, with what God is speaking in your lives because we'd love to hear. Um, yeah. Bless this mess. Oh. <laughs> I said it. It's fine. Redeem this stream. <laughs> this live stream. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your lens. <laughs> Stop. Well, we thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of the new normal. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week on Bless This Mess. Just kidding. (laughs) Sounds okay. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you. Bye.